Hey everyone, uh, today we are going to be going over this experiment 7 and it's going to be over AC voltages, frequency, and how to use an oscilloscope. So um, we'll start off by just getting familiarized with uh, some of the equipment and then we will take some measurements, uh, make a little drawing, and yeah, just kind of learn how all this stuff works right here. So what's important in this lab is that we're going to be uh, dealing with AC uh, currents in this one instead of uh, direct current like how we uh, have done in previous labs. So instead of using this power supply right here, we'll be using a function generator which will put in uh, AC voltage through our system um, and we'll sort of measure that, see how it's different. So what we're really going to start with here though is this piece of equipment. This is called an oscilloscope and so this is what we actually use to take our measurements. So We'll go ahead and power this oscilloscope on. Um, and the first thing that you will notice is we can see um, this line that's going straight across this screen right here. So um, that's just kind of reading no voltage going through our system right now. So you can use some different uh, things on our oscilloscope to be able to move this line around. There's this position knob that'll move it up and down. There's a horizontal one that can move it left and right. Um, so you can kind of move it around to get wherever you need to be to have a nice picture on there, make it easier to read. So um, we also have this intensity button. This just brightens or darkens uh, what we're looking at. Um, but what's really important to note um, is sort of how to take readings on this thing. So if you look here, there's these little squares um, that are going to be divided up uh, on the screen that we're looking at here. And so we're going to refer to each square as a division. So um, what we're really looking at here is that along our x-axis, we're measuring time and our y-axis, we're measuring our voltage. So we're seeing how the voltage changes in time uh, is really what we're measuring here. And so um, each division going this way uh, is some time division uh, along the x-axis, and so vertically it's some voltage division. So uh, we can change um, the scale for how we're measuring these divisions. So the first thing we're gonna look at is the seconds per division knob. So this changes how many seconds each box is representative of. And so what we wanna do is we'll change this to 0.1 seconds per division. So we're seeing this beam go across the screen. Uh, and so each time it passes through a division, that's taking 0.1 seconds. So uh, that passes through and if we were to change this to maybe say one millisecond, well now the beam is moving so fast that it appears to just be a solid line. Technically it's still passing through there like it was before, but the rate is just so uh, rapid that we can't see it moving anymore. So um, that's really all we need to know for part one. You're gonna be asked to uh, make some calculations, um, some measurements, or not measurements, just calculations um, based on how the seconds per division portion uh, of that control works. So we'll go ahead and move on to part two. And for part two, uh, now we're going to bring in our function generator. So our function generator is what's actually going to output uh, our signal, provide voltage um, into this system. So we'll take this cable uh, from the output and we're going to hook it into channel one of our oscilloscope. And so we just hook this in here. Uh, we have our oscilloscope set to be able to read this and now we'll go ahead and power on our function generator. So we can see we uh, are now getting some kind of signal on our oscilloscope. It's not just a flat line anymore and we can change this. Right now we have a sawtooth wave, but we could change it to look like just a sine wave. We could have kind of a square pulse here, um, but we're gonna go ahead, uh, and for this lab, we're gonna be reading it with this um, sort of sawtooth jagged wave here. Uh, and now, 
we want to have uh, this set to about one kilohertz, so um, we're right at about a thousand hertz right now, so that's where we want to be. And then we're going to get this uh, lined up here so that we're reading um, about six volts uh, total, plus or minus. So we'll have our volts per division set to two, so that means each square that we're looking at is two volts. So we need to go six volts up and six volts down to be at plus or minus six volts. So we can adjust this knob a little bit uh, and try and get this lined up. We have this output level on our function generator that can increase and decrease the size of our wave. So we'll increase this until we have this nice wave that goes six volts up and six volts down. And we'll sort of get this positioned right here. Perfect. Okay, so we have uh, this wave that we're looking at. Um, we have the plus or minus six volts. We have it on one millisecond per division. And um, the first thing you would do is just sketch this wave that we have right here. Uh, and so you would sketch this wave, and then um, what we want to now do is add a second channel in. And this is going to be connected to this TTL portion of uh, our function generator, which we will then hook into channel two uh, of our oscilloscope. And now we will uh, set our oscilloscope to be able to read or display both channels at once. And now we see we have uh, another signal coming through, these sort of dashed lines that you can see in between uh, the peaks um, of our uh, signal from channel one. So the next thing we would do is sketch what uh, this part of our signal looks like. And we should note that changing the output level doesn't change the peaks or uh, the second channel. That TTL pulse is um, automatically generated and we don't have a way of adjusting that. Um, so all you're gonna do is sketch these two different waves. Uh, we can upload a picture of what this would look like uh, so you don't just have to rely on this video. And then you're gonna have a worksheet that you're gonna fill out in addition to this that you'll just sort of make some, uh, you'll answer a few questions and that's gonna be it. Uh, this was really just getting you familiarized with this equipment. So hopefully after this video, you sort of understand how to use a function generator and an oscilloscope. That's everything for today, thanks.